Here we are at part four of end-to-end -end machine learning course 112, getting ready to learn Python, Windows edition. Now's where things start getting real. This is where we touch Python for the first time. We have to make sure it's installed on your machine before you can do anything else. The easiest way to do this is to open up a command prompt and at the command prompt type Python. If you don't already have Python on your machine, Windows 10 automatically takes you to the Microsoft Store where you can download a Windows installation of Python. This is okay, but it's not my favorite. There are some subtle limitations to this and it also seems unnecessarily complex to me. But if you do see this Microsoft Store window pop up, you'll know that you don't have it yet and you need to install it. Instead, open up a browser window and go to python.org. There's a link down in the notes below. Once you're at python.org, go to the downloads option and scroll down to windows. Click on that. Now we get a set of options of Python releases for windows. This is where it can get a little bit confusing. There's a lot of options. It's easy to get snowed under. The biggest thing to keep in mind is that there are two major Pythons, Python 2 and Python 3. You want Python 3. Python 2 is a great tool, but it is being retired. It is already no longer actively being updated. Python 3 is uh, the future, although I put the future in quotes. It's been active for quite some time now, and it has some cool new features that make it easier, more consistent, clearer to use than Python 2. So you definitely want Python 3. So the next decision you have to make is which version of Python 3 you want. There's from 3.1, 3.2, all the way up to 3.9 is the very latest and greatest. 3.9 is probably fine for almost everyone. However, I actually prefer to step back one. I use Python 3.8 for now. Sometimes with the very newest versions of Python, there are some incompatibilities with other parts of other Python libraries that can cause me trouble when I'm working. And so I like to hold off until the very latest is not so new. And Python libraries have had a chance to catch up and port their material to it. So we're actually gonna install Python 3.8 here, but the process is almost identical to installing Python 3.9. The next trick is to choose among all of these options for which way you want to install. Um, it is most likely if you have a fairly recent, fairly capable laptop that you want something that says x86-64. That means it's a 64-bit processor. Um, it's possible that you have a 32-bit processor, especially if your laptop is older. But if you have a 64-bit, then I recommend getting the executable installer. This downloads a program which you can run and it will install Python on your machine. If you do have a 32-bit machine, you can come down and click on this other x86 executable installer. The way you'll know is if you try to install the 64-bit executable installer and it doesn't work. So we'll click on this x86-64 executable installer. And on this machine, it brings up a window that confirms that you actually want to download it. It begins the download. And then we can go to our downloads folder. And sure enough, we can see it right there. Our Python dash 3.8.6 dash AMD 64 dot exe. You can see that it's 26.7 megabytes. So decent sized, although that's not considered to be enormous. It's modest for something like Python. Double clicking this .exe installer, the executable installer, pulls up a window. There are some options to check out. You want to make sure to add Python to path. This will let us use it from the command line smoothly. Path is just the list of directories that Windows looks through when it's trying to find a program that you've told it to run. We have the option to customize installation. Here, you can see by default, 
It includes all the documentation. That's good. It includes PIP. That's excellent. We'll talk about that in a later video. It includes TCLTK and IDLE. Those are great. The Python test suite, fine. PyLauncher, also fine. We're not going to make use of it, but it doesn't hurt anything. We can go back then and click install now. Our handy progress bar shows us everything being unzipped and installed and files copied and programs being run. But we don't have to do a thing. Let's sit back and watch it. Then we get a great notice that setup was successful and we can close it. Now we have installed Python 3 on our machine. Our next step is to test it and make sure that it worked okay. So we can go back to our command prompt and type Python again. But when we do, we get sent back to the Microsoft Store. Now what happened here is our Python installer went and changed our path. It changed the list of directories that Windows looks in to try to find Python. But this particular little program, this little command prompt, still has the old path. So in order to really test it, we need to close this command prompt window down and open up a new one. In our fresh window, we type Python, hit enter. Oh, when we see this, we know we've won. It's running now a Python interpreter. It shows we're working with Python version 3.8, which is perfect. That's what we just installed. And it gives us this little three arrows, this little Chevron command prompt that's specific that says, hey, I'm waiting for something now, not for our normal command prompt to, to run, but for our Python interpreter to run. Python itself is just another program that looks for instructions written in a particular code, a particular, a particular language called Python. So now we can type things that are specific to Python and it will do those things. I'll make the font just a little bit bigger here so we can see what's going on a little better and do a preliminary kick of the tires just to make sure everything's working. Print parentheses, quote, hi, quote, parentheses. This tells Python, print what's in the parentheses which is a string, a collection of characters in the quotes, hi, H-I. And then we hit enter. The Python interpreter takes this little set of commands. It does what it says. And sure enough, it says, great, I will print this word, hi. I will print the H and print the I. There you go, I'm done. What's the next thing you want me to do? If you need to get out of this, the secret word is quit with the open and a close parentheses, and that closes the Python interpreter. So Python's running, it's working. This is great, we're getting very, very close. Now stick around for the next video where we actually write and run our very first program.